I started smoking weed in the start of 2019. This is the first video that I took. Start of 2019, my best friend's friend comes over and he teaches me how to smoke weed properly where you're supposed to cough like the first few times. And immediately, I felt a physical symptom of anxiety leaving my body. I realized I was always, through my entire life up until that point, I had been carrying like this, this wave of anxious thoughts and paranoia. And with every hit that I took of the joint, it started to seep away. Imagine that, imagine like literally for the first part of your entire life, experiencing what it's like to be like normal and healthy and not having this deep rooted trauma or anxiety stored inside of your body and mind. It's a very nice experience. And so the nice thing turns into a frequent thing and I start smoking more and more and it's not like I had accountability or anything really important to do. And so my days, especially my evenings, it turned into me just being sat on the couch, just eating food like this. It's Rick and Morty playing in the background. And this. You can literally see I'm... I'm I'm faded, I'm slow, I'm lethargic, I'm just sat on the couch. And this wasn't just for this video, this was literally just what my day-to-day -day routine was like. I would wake up and go to the gym first thing in the in the, the day. That was still important to me. But in the gym, I wasn't even making progress. I was eating shitty food, which we'll discuss soon. But then after that, it's like I had no workout routine. I had no, like, the, the strength and the energy and, and the good nutrition to be able to push myself to hit real PRs. And so I was just spinning my wheels. Like, I did not make any progress in any lift for over, like, a year straight. Imagine, literally, you, you're on 80 kg bench for a year straight and every little time I'd add a little bit to the bar, it would be too heavy for me. I made no progress in the thing that was the most important like the hobby or habit, habit that I had. And so I'd, once I'd come back from the gym, it'd be a few hours of kind of coping, doing random stuff till eventually it was time to smoke. And it was just so much more fun at that point, like, you know, leading up to the time that we're going to smoke. We always had like a ritual where we'd smoke at 7 p.m. That was the first time. I still remember it was 7 p.m. We set like a, bro, I've got like a, <laughs> keep feeling like a little hair touch my nose. It's the beard, bros. <laughs> we always had a rule that it was 7 p.m. That's when we could smoke. And then it went to six and then it went into five and then it just disappeared. And it was just like, okay, well, you can smoke whenever you want. And that's what my life turned into. Wake up, gym, cope, smoke. Smoking was then followed by binge eating. I'm not talking about just eating some snacks. This was my Tinder profile whilst I had a girlfriend who I was living with. You see what? The common advice that's been shared these days that you should have a girl and you can cheat on her anyway and you know the red pill men and women are different and stuff and i've experienced that kind of lifestyle what i haven't shown you from these two previous uh videos the reason why i've stopped it exactly here is because my girlfriend sat next to me there and there she sat next to me and this is what i've got on my phone and i'm still actively like meeting more girls from tinder and fucking them I was living that degenerate life. And I really do think weed was a part of this because smoking weed, when it makes you into this lazy, creative person, it makes you more of a degenerate with, with worse values. You can just imagine if all things, sorry, not if all things are equal, but you can just imagine if you took two people and one of them was a weed smoker, you could automatically assume he's got worse character traits than the other guy. Just You could just assume that. I don't think that's, 
totally unfair to say. And so this was my Tinder profile. It used to get me quite a lot of, of matches and I'd be meeting these girls all around Manchester, usually smoking weed with them. And then I would go back home to my girlfriend. And she knew what these red pill guys that you see online, like they are actually right. When, when a girl truly loves you and she really respects you and she thinks you're like hot shit, you can be the guy that is like literally cheating on her and she'll still stay. But it's, it's, I experienced then I would not go back because it is, I think it's like a morally wrong thing. Now having experienced that, like, you know, multiple kinds of lives, I do actually think commitments is a good thing. We'll discuss that later, but I, I just wanted to bring this up just because it kind of relates to this topic of just being a degenerate, low value little sloth. And the food. <laughs> succulent chicken. Can't wait for this. Succulent. Show me that succulent. It's me and my friend goofing around. I'm not. I don't think we were actually high right there, but like we were smoking almost every day, and we're just eating some like this Mexican food. I really like these these uh, fudge pieces. This is just for me, by the way. This isn't for two people. This is what I was eating. What do you think I look like after eating all this? One more. You can see the lighter there as well. fat piece of shit again what i always say when i show like these bad pictures of myself i know that around 50 percent of people who are watching this are thinking that that's not so bad it's always relative this was me about seven years into weightlifting into being an athlete if i'm like this and i'm 20 percent body fat and i've got saggy titties and i've got like this lower belly fat and i look like fucking fluffy and, and flabby that's a disgrace as a guy who's been going to the gym for six months or something, okay, fair enough, you still got some weight to lose, sure. But as a guy who called himself an athlete for years, it's all relative. This was poor for me. Someone else, like some like skinny kid or some fat guy might look at this and say, oh, well, that's not too bad, but it's all relative. This was horribly bad for me when I was used to having a six pack and being quite lean. This was the consequence of a hundred or 200 nights, probably about a hundred nights straight of smoking weed every single night without fail. Not only was my training poor, but my diet suffered tremendously. And I want you to really just put yourself in that position right there of how much pain that would have caused you. Someone, you know, we're all here. We go to the gym as these young guys on self-improvement of how important it is for you to build up your body. And eventually you get addicted to a substance that makes you feel incapable of still training and dieting. You see the one thing productive thing that you've done the one accomplishment that you have which is your physique you see that rot away every single day how would you feel because i felt awful and it felt uncontrollable which was the worst part this video is the first time i went to thailand and this was 24 hours from us landing from the plane and for the guys who have been to thailand they might kind of know like where i am right now it's just like a one second clip but like it's not specifically where i am but what kind of place am i currently in this is what's called a rasta bar and it's where in thailand before it was recently legalized you could go and buy weed illegally and thailand has extremely extremely strict drug rules it's not as like as dangerous as you think it is especially not with weed like they'll sell it in a shop like this but you can easily get arrested and if they do want to they genuinely can murder you for that like they do have the death penalty and every now and then you can go and like look up like thailand does actually have the death penalty for um for drug cases 
This is when weed was still illegal. My entire family warned me just in cases and everyone was saying, you know, just be careful there. 24 hours of landing, we went straight here. The weed was disgusting here as well. This was a good few years ago, but it was literally like all sort of uh, crumpled up, almost in like a brick form instead of the actual bud flowers. It's very different now. Weed is legalized there now. And this was the consequence of that. When I play this video, it's the last one or two seconds. I want you to just look at the expression of my face and I want you to, to ask yourself, does this look like a superior man with a purpose? Does this look like a man who is present? I literally know I'm being recorded and I look like I'm fucking AFK. Look at that. My skin... That the shape of my head looks fucking weird as well, but that's separate. But like, I had all these spots in my head, like so many of these spots, which I just thought was just kind of like normal genetics or something. It obviously wasn't. You're inhaling this toxin, which is estrogenic, by the way. Weed is literally is estrogenic. Like, it, it decreases your testosterone. It it leads the gynecomastia. It was making my skin bad, my head, my scalp would hurt because I had all these little little uh, bumps, little red dots and everything. This was just in COVID when pretty much every guy ended up trimming his, uh, his hair off. This facial expression that you see right here describes my life perfectly. And the pictures that I've shown you were over one and a half years. For over one and a half years, I smoked weed every single day and I was broke and I still had, I had it in my budget. I wanted to quit 10, 20, 30, 40 times. I really, really wanted to. And I kept on messing up. I kept on, you know, setting this intention to quit, but it felt almost like a full-time job. Like I was like, just pulled so much towards it. I'd smoke. I wouldn't even enjoy the high anymore. And then when I wanted to quit, I'd be so pulled towards it. Now, you know what? Something I've not even mentioned. This was the worst mental health of my entire life. There's, there's something that goes way deeper than, you know, like eating some junk food. But, you know, some people say like they get paranoid when they smoke weed. That was me. I had about six months of smoking where it was just kind of nice. It was chill or maybe a bit less than that. And there was this one day where I smoked. I went out to like this park with my girlfriend and we ended up smoking it. And it's interesting. I won't play you the clip, but we ended up recording like this kind of cute, like little video of us, like pretending to be YouTubers there for like 10 minutes. And now, hey guys, welcome back to our like 10, uh, zero subscriber special. And we're just kind of like sitting there and everything, laughing, smoking and talking like as if we're YouTubers. And at the end of the video, you see my girlfriend, like my, this is my ex-girlfriend. You see her kind of get up and straight away, I'm kind of like, I just get instantly scared. I'm like, wait, 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 sit down. You might fall. You might fall. We're like a solid meter away. You know, you might trip and fall over into the water or something. But like, it, it, this was the first part of my paranoia, which might seem insignificant. But then we start walking back to the apartments. And that's when the weirdest dark thoughts start popping into my mind. When I start having a battle in my own mind and I'm starting to, I can't. Stop thinking weird, negative stuff. My life's just awful and I don't even, I hate my life. I like, there's literally no point in, in living. I may as well just kill myself. Wait, what? And I'm literally having this argument in my mind because I've, I've just found it so fucking weird that my brain generated the thought that I may as well just kill myself because of how little I was enjoying life because I had no purpose. I had no good character traits that I was developing that I was proud of. I was living like this shell of a life that was purely just ran, that was, that was pulled by pleasure and desire. Not purpose, not mission, not leadership, not, not development, self-improvement and learning. But just pleasure, tinder, junk food, sugar, weed, sex movies and video games this is all i was spending my time with there was the gym as well but like i said it wasn't really working for me at the time and i'm saddened to say to even think back about this but that moment which i just told you about where i had that bad high where you know i was quite paranoid that happened about who knows four or five six months into me smoking weed and i told you that i smoked weed for about one and a half years right after that day 
I never had a good high again. Think about what I've just told you. I told you before that I smoked weed pretty much every single day for one and a half years. And I'm telling you this is the truth. From that first moment where I had that first paranoid high, those exact same negative thoughts came to me in every single time that I smoked for the next year straight. Imagine 365 days of that mental turmoil going on inside of your mind, those dark thoughts where you're questioning, ending it all every day. And it was so odd because when I would smoke, I'd, I'd realize the negative thoughts were coming back in. And this led to this weird feedback, like this loop from hell, where I had negative thoughts about the negative thoughts and I had these intrusive thoughts and it was like this weird, complex psychological problem. And I dealt with that every single day. Since that point, I'll tell you like more of the story in chronological order, but yeah. When I look back to that, I genuinely can't believe that I kept on smoking, but I, it was a pure addiction. I know some people say you can't be addicted to weed. I personally do think you can because I didn't enjoy life anymore apart from when I was smoking. But when I'd smoke, it made me paranoid and, and gave me these dark thoughts where, you know, like I was just doing nothing with my life. Soon this turned into thoughts of entrepreneurship. Here I am in the homeless shelter, which I've mentioned in a bunch of videos. So I worked at nighttime. This is where the homeless guys would knock. They'd literally just like peer their head through there. And um, you'd see that this, the, uh, the outside of the house would be, let's say, you see my cursor, it'd be like way up there, right? That's where they'd group up at like 4 a.m. And they'd disappear for like one hour or two hours. And then they'd walk back still in the dark with three bikes, with like some MacBook monitor thing here, with this other like PC or laptops or bags of like random stuff. Like every night they'd go out and rob people in, in Manchester. And this is where I'd see them poke their heads. I go, do, 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 do. Well, yo, mate, can you open it? I want to get some breakfast. And they'd literally have to walk past me to go there and everything. So it's quite a scary place. I was working at nighttime, right? I'd often work 16 hour shifts from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. I want you to think about that right now. Really visualize that. Have you ever done that before? From 4 p.m., to 8 a.m. was my shift. And here I am, probably at 1 or 2 or 3 a.m., trying to learn how to code. For all the coders out there, they can probably recognize this site. That word right there says free code camp. I'm trying to learn how to code in this this job that I'm working at and I've got respect for this version of Hamza who's putting in the work now he was still weak because he'd finished these shifts and he'd come home and the first thing he'd do was smoke but at least he was starting to like you know become productive and start like working on this this was around the time that I made this video which you probably know about how to build an, an aesthetic physique I actually called it how to build an attractive body and I re uh, later on renamed it to Aesthetic Physique. I wonder if, um, Aesthetic Body, sorry. I wonder if, if I kept it as Attractive Body, if it ever would have blown up. So this literally just means the side of your shoulder. You train this by doing lateral raises with light. So this literally just means the side. It was at this point when I had thoughts and desires of entrepreneurship, really, really deep desires. And that started to become the priority of my life, but I was still caged by weed i was working that job that i told you about even before that job i was working full-time in customer service and maybe one day i'll tell you a story about that but at this point i hated my life so much i had journaled so many pages it was time to go home i had lived away from my family for the last three years from this point and Especially back then, it's like my, me and my family, we did not have a good relationship. We had a lot of trauma growing up. And even around that time, there was a lot of like abuse and shouts and fights and everything. So if you imagine, if you had moved out, would you want to move back into that dynamic? Probably not. Especially when, you know, you're an adult, you've got a gamer girlfriend that you live with, that you smoke weed with and fuck every single day. That stuff's kind of nice, right? I was going to give up the, the multiple vices that many men would have chose. And I did it for the pursuit of 
entrepreneurship and business because I realize that this is something I'm, I'm heavily pulled towards. The decision did not come easy. I, I won't lie to you. It wasn't this monumental thing like, yeah, I'm going to do it. It was genuinely months. I, I filled out. I always say this like uh, you can't see it, but like just imagine like a normal A4 size journal, you know, just like a normal like notepad. I filled out two of those on this decision of whether I should go home or not. Weighing up all these decisions, pros and cons, writing about my girlfriend, writing about the people at home and everything. All whilst high. And one of the major reasons that I wrote, like the pro of moving back home, was that I knew I'd stop smoking weed instantly. I don't really know how I knew that. Because I didn't know much about self-improvement, but it turned out... I was absolutely right. This is pretty much the first day that I'd moved back home to this town that I live in. And it was a magical transformation, almost immediately my mental health improved because compare like I've not showed you the environment that I lived in in Manchester but when you have like trees around you there's a couple there's a guy running it's just so much more friendly instantly I felt so much happier and safer here like my anxiety just kind of lowered down I realized cities aren't for me that's a separate point but it, it is something I'm quite strongly a believer of I do believe cities are very unhealthy and so I moved back to this this beautiful town and this is still, this town's almost like a city and it's still got like a city center, but like where I live, you can see here, it looks beautiful and there's this grass, there's little kids who like run and, and, and cycle their bikes and everything. And this was one of the first days I had ordered these gymnastic rings to, to essentially meet me at home when I moved there and I'm setting them up for the first time and I'm like watching a YouTube tutorial on how to use them. I started restoring peace to my life. You can see how friendly the environment is. People walking their dogs, an old couple walking past. I moved back home and I instantly stopped smoking weed. That was it. It was as simple as that for me. It was all about changing my environments my environment in manchester in the apartment that i lived in with a girlfriend that i no longer related to because me and her had met in our sort of degenerate drug days and i wanted to now become an entrepreneur and be productive and learn about finance and investing whereas she just wanted to watch movies and so imagine you're living with someone who you're so different to and you've still got to kind of spend time with them and so the time to spend with her became to just smoke weed and so it meant that being in that environment it almost felt like I was required to smoke weed almost every day. And the day that I moved back home to this environment where I lived next to my parents, my brother and my sister, this was a few years ago, I quit smoking immediately. And you know what was interesting? I had smoked for one and a half years almost every day. I had no withdrawals or desires at all. Previously, when I had stayed in the same environment and I wanted to quit smoking, whether permanently or, you know, for those tolerance breaks, major withdrawals, night sweats, like, you know, the, the intense dreams coming back up, sweating so much that it was super uncomfortable. None of that when I moved back home. In, in fact, I was like, there was such a smile, a blissful feeling on my face because now I could finally focus full time on entrepreneurship. I no longer even needed to work any jobs because the idea was I'll move back home. I've got no expenses here. Hopefully my parents can be fine with you know me moving back home for free for a little bit. I actually went on government welfare so I started getting like two hundred dollars a month, which I was pretty much just giving to my family so that they could pay for like the food and everything that I was using. And with that I was able to just develop my business full time. And it felt you know what Working on my business, working on something that felt productive, that felt like purposeful, that felt rewarding and challenging that I had to learn for and I had to, to grow for. That has been more fun than any high that I've had so far. 
So this is my message to you, younger Hamza, who's watching this, a young guy who's watching this, who's been struggling to quit smoking weed. The one piece of advice that I can give you, the most important, is changing your environments. This doesn't just mean, for example, throwing away the weed and the lighter and saying, yeah, I'm just never going to smoke anymore because that didn't work for me. I tried that. I threw away the good bong as well. <laughs> and then I ended up just buying all that stuff back. What worked for me, which I think might work for you, is changing up your environment significantly. For me, it was I was living in the degen environment away from family and I moved back to family. If you're someone who smokes at home with your family, you might want to consider moving somewhere else, maybe getting some cheap place where you're just kind of alone for a month or two months to just kind of reset things because it's extremely hard to change just one variable. If you've got this like intense addiction at home that you're really trying to get rid of, and that's the only thing that you're trying to change. It's so hard because there's so many reminders. It's all your your habits, your you know, these cravings are all there. This is a little bit of a side note, but it is relatable to you. I want you to think about how painful it would be to be a husband and your wife passes away. I want you to really realistically imagine like genuinely really falling in love with this beautiful, amazing, friendly woman that you actually like look up to. And you have this amazing relationship for five years, 10 years, and she ends up dying. Just to give you an example, right? And there you are in your home and it's deeply lonely. Everything reminds you of her, right? A smart thing to do in that situation, which is what a lot of like widows do, they sell the house and they go. Because there's just too many memories. It's like it, it becomes that like this this intense full time job of just getting reminded of what used to be here. And I think that's an ex dramatic example, but I think quitting weed is the exact same thing. I think if you stay in the environment that you're in, it's almost impossible to change things. One last thing I'll add to that is having something more important and more fun. For me, it was entrepreneurship, it was business, it was self-improvement. That changed my life forever. Below my monitor that I'm recording on, I have a stack of self-improvement books. I started multiple businesses around this time. I was learning to code, I was drop shipping, I was reselling on eBay. I was growing the YouTube channel like you saw with the Aesthetic Body video. And as soon as I started to really make a little bit of progress in YouTube and it started to you know, feel rewarding, I only had like 50 or 100 subscribers. That gave me more pleasure in my life, which meant that I didn't really need the pleasure from smoking weed and eating junk food. It gave me purpose and something to be clear minded for. You see, purpose is a beautiful thing for young men, it, from all, all ages of men. Because it gives you something to be clean for. It gives you something to be sober for. You can always tell the level of purpose in a man by how sober he is from vices. You can always see this in yourself. How purposeful you are completely correlates to how sober you are. Because you just don't need anything. You don't want anything to, to take away your focus from the thing that you love. I don't need to party, I don't need to smoke, I don't need to drink. Those things are genuinely less fun than my day-to-day -day life. I hope that this can give you a little bit of hope and support in cases you're able to relate to my story at all. I wish you the best of luck. Mwah.